What you're looking at here is not a 3D model. It's not even made from polygons, and if you can believe it, it doesn't even have textures. Now, you might be wondering, how can this not be a 3D model? I mean, you can clearly see the depth information, the textures, the lighting changes, and reflections. For all intents and purposes, this looks like a 3D model. But what if I told you this is a new way of representing 3D elements? It is the hottest topics in computer graphics lately, and for a good reason too. This technique promises a lot of things that felt impossible a few years back, like view-dependent effects, real-time reflections, subsurface scattering, or transparency, all thanks to a little something called Gaussian splatting. Gaussian splatting is not a new tech. It's been around since the 90s, so the technique itself isn't new. But the reason this approach of representing the three-dimensional spaces actually resurfaced and it is making huge waves in the computer graphics scene is the new approach used to generate these things. Now, I'm not gonna pretend that I understand all the ins and outs of Gaussian splatting, nor do I want to bore you with all the mathematical and technical jargon and concepts that come with this technology. Because what I'm gonna show you here is why Gaussian splatting is amazing and the easiest tool that can help you use this concept practically. And this tool is Kiri Engine, the sponsor of this video. With it, you can get your splats up and running in minutes with the Kiri Engine app. Also, Kiri's latest release introduced 3D Gaussian splatting to Mesh 2.0, which is a revolutionary update, but more on that later. I do honestly think that Kiri Engine is an innovative app that has been pushing the boundaries of what you can do with Gaussian splatting, I mean since the beginning. They even developed an add-on for Blender to easily use the scans and edit them hassle-free, which I will talk about too. But before I get into the update, first, I want to give you an idea about 3D Gaussian splatting and why you should even care. So you probably have heard of 3D scanning, photogrammetry, or maybe nerfs. And Gaussian splatting is somewhat similar. You take a series of images, reconstruct camera positions, and generate a sparse point cloud. From this point onward, you can take multiple routes. You can either mesh it and arrive at photogrammetry, or you can optimize it through a neural network and end up with nerves. Or you can go the Gaussian splatting route and end up with these ellipsoid splats which can represent your scene basically as close to photorealistic as you can get without all the glitches and junk that comes with the other scanning methods. And they can run faster too. You're getting basically a 100 plus FPS that's including all the photorealistic effects like reflections, refractions, the specularities, all without needing a neural network. On top of that, this new 3D Gaussian splatting method has been around for just about a year. And so, many advancements have been made to how you can create, render, use, and distribute your Gaussian splats through the browser, game engines, 3D software, and so much more. One of the software that has been leading the charge since day one is Scary Engine. It was the first app to provide Gaussian splatting for Android phones last November. They also introduced the first 3GS editing and cropping tools not long after. And then in March 2024, they introduced the world's first 3GS to mesh algorithm, which allowed users to turn their blob mass into an actual and somewhat editable mesh, which they could use in their 3D software. As we talked about in the beginning, splats are not a mesh in the traditional sense, so all the editing features that come with 3D objects are missing. Now, 3GS does allow for a certain level of editability, but nowhere near as editing a mesh. To my knowledge, the only app that offers this functionality at the moment is Kiri, but don't quote me on this one. Fast forward to today, and they introduced their latest 3GS to Mesh 2.0, and this is a new update to the already successful 3GS to Mesh 1.0, and the difference is huge. You can tell the difference in the quality between the before and the after. No offense to the 1.0 version, but it looks like crap when viewed next to the 2.0 update. Also, on this 3.12 update, they added a new automatic background remover. Before, you had to do this manually with the cropping feature, but now you can just do that automatically by flipping a switch. You can find the option in the upload page under 3DGS to mesh. 
just flip the remove background switch to only keep the subject. Amongst other small features and changes, like a separate tab for the meshes and performance improvements across the board, the 3D GS2 Mesh 2.0 is a big deal. The fidelity of the models generated via this algorithm is outstanding, especially when it comes to shiny and reflective surfaces, which are, as you know, the bane of all people that scan anything ever in their lives. Shiny, reflective, and transparent surfaces are some of the hardest things to deal with in 3D scanning. Since this Gaussian splatting offers efficiency and ease of access, I wonder if it would ultimately replace photogrammetry completely. But I would like to hear your opinions. Another thing that I am personally excited about is their new Blender add-on through the GS Render. Ever since I saw Corridor Digital Gray Matter short film where they use Gaussian splatting to scan and recreate the infinite hallway, I was hooked. I knew about Gaussian splatting before, but seeing it used practically in a VFX workflow really opened so many possibilities. The Blender add-on through the GS Render helps you bring your scans into Blender cause usually in the app, the scans look really good, basically photorealistic, but sadly, you can't do much with them, especially if you are a Blender user. The add-on opens up a lot of possibilities when dealing with this new tech. You have a dedicated window where you can import your PLY files, adjust shading, masking, and a lot more. This new add-on version also fixed a lot of previous issues and glitches. The add-on is now more reliable and can deal with scans much better, in addition to being more stable and you can now even animate them. And also, incorporate your object in motion graphics, use different types of masks and crop boxes, edit colors and so much more. You can also support full depth of field and all those good old camera effects. On top of that, the add-on is completely free. So if you are using Blender, you can get it by following the link down in the description. The app is also free to use, but to access some of the features, you can get the premium subscription, which at the moment is 55% off the pro yearly plan, which will come down to 3 bucks a month. If you stick with the plan, it will renew basically forever at this price. So I think this is a great opportunity. And there you have it guys. Gaussian splatting is an amazing breakthrough in computer graphics, and I personally feel like it's gonna be the future of 3D scanning, if not 3D in general. So check out Kerry Engine and their add-on and take advantage of their offer right now. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.